Hey, what's happening guys? Strike here and welcome back to Arkham Asylum for one last video I thought I would do. In the last video, we finally finished the Riddler run, and in this video, we are going to be exploring something I've been kind of ignoring up until this point on Arkham Asylum. Whenever you run around the island, you will come across these things known as Arkham... Spirit of Arkham Chronicles. The Spirit of Arkham. Now... It's believed that these... Uh, okay, let's read this little thing here. The writings have revealed a story that cannot possibly belong to just Amadeus Arkham. The story has weaved through time and ended on an individual who must still be alive and working here on Arkham Island. I need to figure out who it is and confront them before they can do any more harm. Now, I don't exactly know what he means by harm, since... You know. It's, uh... Interesting, and it, it, it was originally Amadeus Arkham himself. Now let me read up on Amadeus Arkham. Amadeus Arkham founded the Elizabeth Arkham Asylum for the Criminally Insane, naming it after his mother, whom he uh, euthanized. I, I have no clue what that is. As treatment for her, euthanized as treatment for her dementia. Maybe that's it. I don't know. I'm not good with big words. Building it on the old grounds of his family's historic mansion on the outskirts of, of Gotham, Amadeus personally treated its first patient, Martin Mad Dog Hawkins, who had killed Amadeus' wife and daughter. After administrating fatal electroshock treatments to Hawkins, Amadeus lost all grip on his sanity and was admitted to his own institution. Well... The spirit of Amadeus Arkham is still pretty darn strong here at Arkham Asylum. But I'm curious as to who it could be. Who the spirit of Amadeus Arkham is. Who is one person who we don't trust on Arkham Island? There is kind of hints at someone who Batman doesn't trust exactly, who has been working on this island and who you know, has a major role, and who isn't dead by this point in the game, because we did lose a couple characters like, you know, Frank Bowles, uh, Penelope Young, um, you know, people like that. Uh, Aaron Cash is one of those people we gotta trust. I mean, he's just a great guy. Someone who thinks that they're, like, you know, basically the savior, oh, I'm going the wrong way, basically the savior of Gotham. Now, I'm going to take a minute, and I'm going to go through all of the Amadeus Arkham things now. I, I, I wanted to do this, but let's go through and listen. Take a good listen to what he has to say. I am the spirit of Amadeus Arkham. Through my actions, I have saved this cursed city, though my own curse is to forever remain in the shadows. My story is carved into the very soul of Arkham and will only be revealed to those dedicated enough to discover it. Okay, so that's a little introduction message. My family's blood ran through the heart of Gotham. We were doctors, politicians, and teachers. We have been the organ cleaning the arterial filth from the city. We have been its servants, giving all to protect it. And still, it has chosen to hurt us. As Gotham's veins slowly filled with pain and suffering, the effects were felt everywhere. My father fell first, infected by some foul disease. My mother lived on, but only in a dream. I returned to the family home to care for her, for she remained in her bed for as long as her body continued to breathe. Her tears kept me awake at night. That's sad. My journey lasted little over a month. Visiting academics in both Metropolis and Keystone, I was exposed to a wealth of new ideas. I began my day returning home in good spirits, Eager to see my wife and family, I ended it kneeling in their blood, broken fragments of my life, pouring through dripping red fingers. Yeah, Mad Dog, the Martin Mad Dog killer guy, he uh, killed Amadeus Arkham's family, basically. 
I returned to my work, but I could not shake the pictures from my mind. I should have been repulsed, but I was more eager than ever to find an explanation for why someone would do this. So he's, he wants to... He's curious as to why someone would ever do something like this. Like what, what they are mentally thinking during this process, basically. They brought the animal before me, shameless and barking like a mad dog. For what felt like days, I endured his boasts. He took pleasure recounting his actions, cataloging his depraved crimes. What should have been revenge turned to pity. This poor dog needed my help. As you will notice, it transitions from Amadeus Arkham, like the Amadeus Arkham from the olden days of Gotham, to someone in current days who is still alive. Oops. The island changed little over the years. Its reputation was in tatters, but I vowed to fix it. As the buildings were rebuilt, I saw the future. A bright, wonderful future. New brick, metal and paint covered old wounds. Fresh blood was injected into the body. Bright new minds came and all swore to uphold our promises. We all knew we were the ones to fix this city. And the city would thank us. My family's killer stood in front of me. Years of therapy have deemed him sane. I was proud to see him walk free. In exchange for his liberty, the state required only a signature. He talked about wanting to walk in a park, how he longed to feel fresh air on his face. And then he took my father's fountain pen and killed my secretary. As he was subdued, he screamed out, pleading for forgiveness, for pity. But I had none. I watched as guards beat him to a stain on the floor. Spring was a turning point, a new beginning, a glorious realization of my true destiny. My family's killer perished in an unfortunate accident. These animals cannot be cured. Like dogs, they only respond to discipline. And if that fails, then I was afraid that these accidents would have to continue. So basically, if patients don't want to cooperate, he's going to end up killing them. I took a walk around my island. I passed by the penitentiary and felt nauseous at the thought of the filth it contained. I looked out over the Gotham Bay, and in the distance I saw lights. No doubt boats bringing more filthy degenerates to my city. I swore again to protect her from this darkness. I argued with the latest group of young, eager doctors. They bored me with theories and ideas, proving that they had no theories on how to cure these animals. Only one shared my vision. I offered her the chance to explore her dream. She accepted. We'll make a good team. Not really sure what that means, to be honest. The Gotham police dragged a new patient to the island. They said he was responsible for the disappearance of hundreds of the city's vagrants. As I looked at his disgusting body, all scales and teeth, my mind ran free. Dreaming of delicious punishments to break this monster. Doctors gathered around, poking it, examining. But only I knew what would cure him, once and for all. 
That one is obviously referencing Killer Croc, and my my synopsis now that Arkham Origins is out is that like that's like when he was first transported to Arkham Asylum after the events of Arkham Origins. Because uh, if you didn't know, in Arkham Origins, there's talk about reopening Arkham Asylum and stuff. So, yeah, moving on. The beast was too strong. His animal savagery nearly cost me my life. I took my frustrations out on a lone patient. His case notes suggested he was a paranoid schizophrenic. His pleas as I beat him to death suggested much more. His confessions were illuminating. My path was clear. Next. Every day I found the patients more distracting. Their insane mutterings and constant twitching disgusted me. There was only one way to cure this evil. Only one way to purify the city and ensure its future. I needed to prepare myself. I needed to be ready. I had a sudden pang of conscience. I sought counsel from my priest on the choices I had made. I asked him if it was a sin to kill in order to save a life. The holy man said all life was sacred, but a judgment would not be upon my soul if I acted to save another. I left the confessional with my soul uplifted. Convinced more than ever, I am doing a service not only to mankind, but to God as well. So he thinks by killing all these insane people that he's basically doing something for God. Kind of weird. Wait. Crap, wait. I watched in silence as he brought in the woman. Her skin, now a venomous green. The wanton creature no longer looked like a human being, much less a woman. The Bible says, suffer not a witch to live. Yet he has once again delivered this female atrocity to our care. Once I have dealt with the monster, I think it will be time to see if green wood does, in fact, burn. Okay, so obviously he is referencing Batman, and the green woman is obviously Poison Ivy. Sitting in the darkness outside of his cell, I watched the crazed twitching, listened to the disgusting words that came from his mouth. How can I let a dirty animal like this live? He is the cancer I have sworn to protect the city from. I'm not really sure who that could be talking about. It could be talking about, like, Zaz or someone. I don't know. Curse me for a fool. How could I not see it until now? The monster had a confederate. I hid in the darkness near his cell and saw with my own eyes one of the doctors whispering to him. She looked at him through the transparent barrier with tenderness, with, dare I say, desire. My skin crawled with revulsion as she kissed the glass. Fighting the urge to dash the woman's head through the glass, I let her continue. The damnable clown might have shared secrets with her that would be useful once the mad dog has been executed. I'm sure the woman will reveal what she knows to me. If not willingly, then certainly under electronic persuasion. After that, a lobotomy, I think. Unfortunate for one so young. 
But her lust has put the reputation of Arkham at stake. Yes, a lobotomy. The very thing. There is no other way to ensure her silence in this regrettable matter. So that one's actually probably one of my favorites of this because it's obviously talking about Joker and Harley Quinn as, or, Har or Harley and Quinzel as uh, she's about to become Harley Quinn. And um, another thing I really like about that is uh, the um, dialogue from the spirit of Amadeus Arkham there, how he says like electronic persuasion and lobotomy because those are the kinds of things that old insane asylums used to use to torture their inmates because Arkham Asylum is basically... Um, especially in this game, it's, it's supposed to be emulating the old 1920s, like, insane asylums where they would send in all these patients and they would just torture the living crap out of them. The doctors and the people who worked there would just torture the living crap out of the patients. Um, you should, if you want to know more about that kind of stuff, you should, like, research old insane asylums. That's why there aren't a whole lot of those left around today. Yet again, I found myself watching him. No one can provide a cure. He laughs in the face of those who try. Amadeus would not have let him live, and neither should I. One last sip of cognac, and I was ready. Yep, that's once again talking about the Joker, and he's apparently going to try and kill him. He watched as I entered the cell. He smiled as I showed him the knife. I told him how I will use it. How I will cleanse this city. And then, terror. I was paralyzed. I struggled. I screamed, but I was silent. The monster looked at me, expressionless. He ran my blade slowly across my forehead. A smile cracked across his horrible porcelain face, and I heard the filth fall from his mouth. He laughed and called me that horrible name. Sharpie, probably. Probably called him Sharpie, but yeah, that's the Joker once again attacking um, the spirit of Amadeus Arkham because uh, the Joker is way tougher than the guy who is the spirit of Amadeus Arkham, but I'm not going to give it away. It must have been Crane, another one who doesn't deserve to live. Why do these people thrive on chaos? Joker, in particular, desired anarchy. And since his escape will no doubt wreak it upon my city, I feel this is the end for my diary. Joker will be recaptured. My story will be told. I am not afraid. If Arkham becomes my cell, then I will know I did my best. I will be remembered. Yeah, well... Um, yeah. So, that was, uh, pretty much the Spirit of Amadeus Arkham naming two of the major villains by name this time. Joker and Crane, a.k.a. the Scarecrow. And the final one for right now... I am the spirit of Amadeus Arkham. Even though Amadeus had long since passed, his spirit lived on, surviving, moving through the walls of his asylum. When it chose me, I felt proud. I was honored to continue his work, to cleanse this city. If you are strong-willed enough to follow my tale, you are strong-minded enough to deduce my identity. Come and find me, friend. Together, we will save Gotham. Huh. Well, for now, that's the last one. But if you didn't already know who the person was through his voice actor, the guy who just spoke, it's kind of obvious. Now, for some reason, I didn't put the two pieces together way back when and I don't know why but I want to do some investigating because I think I may know who it is There's something suspicious about this wall 
the only blank wall in the entire room. Now, why would that be? Hmm, better do some investigating here. Let's see what we got. First try. A secret room in the warden's office. What is he up to? Sanity fighting the madness, hey. Not sure why he would have such a secret room like this planted, but what's this? Some sort of... Huh, odd, some sort of asylum within the city. Quincy Sharp's Gotham City proposal. Not only is he running for mayor, but he's got some sort of inner city prison being built. Hmm. Wonder what that's all about. But Quincy Sharp was last seen in the penitentiary, so I better get over there and, uh, ask him a few questions, if you know what I mean. Go ahead and get over there. <sighs> I'm not really sure why Quincy Sharp would have such a secret uh, room in his office, but I'm kind of curious now. We better go ask him, because, you know. I want to know what he's about to Let's interrogate him yeah. Batman style. I still think it's weird how you can't see where you fight the Joker on top of the penitentiary from, like, the other buildings. But oh well. Let's go ahead and get in here and ask him a few questions. He should still be in that same cell that he was in earlier. cell block. Alright, let's get over to this, uh, where he's been kept this entire time. Ah, I got caught. On the other side of the green mile. Weird. He's not appearing on the detective mode. What? How did he... How did he get out? Where is he? What the... What is this? My name is Quincy Sharp, the spirit of Amadeus Arkham. You have done well to decipher my story, and I pray it has helped you on your path. I trust that through my writings, you will do what is right. Please, I implore you, 
continue my work. This city deserves a savior. Continue my work. Hmm, that's weird. He went from hating me to appreciating my work. And I'm not sure why he scribbled my name all over the floor with magic marker. Kind of creepy. What a weirdo. I'll get to him later, though. I'm not sure how he got out or where he's at, but... Why did the warden take off so quick? I thought you told him to stay put. <laughs> oh. Interesting. Anyway, that concludes my walkthrough of Batman Arkham Asylum. Oops. Thank you all so much for watching. <laughs> I will see you all at Batman Arkham City. Stay tuned for that. I'll see you there. Check my head, I guess the joke's on me.